Over to you, Liz. Thank you, Danny. And hello, everybody. It's great to be here this evening to do an overview on contests. So basically, the thing I'm going to spend a few minutes on now is on the organisation aspect of your contest. So first of all, has anybody here not ever organised a speech contest at any level? Anybody not done it? John, Tom, you've not? Matty? Okay, so a few people, you've never, ever, ever organised a speech contest. So, John, what role are you today? Uh, what I, I'm president, and my club, Tower Toastmasters, is hosting our area contest in two weeks' time. So okay. that's why I'm here. <laughs> All right, no worries. And Angela, what, are you a president, VPE, or AD? Uh, or? A division director now. But I was a president last year, and um, well, they organized the contest in the club, but it was mainly the VP, and um, Peter was part of the team that works on it, so I wouldn't have been actively involved in it. Right. Really okay, involved in and Tom, what about yourself? Are you? <laughs> yeah, Liz, uh, the clubs in my area have all organized now, and this Saturday we're having our area competition. And it's the first time that I've been involved at this level. And so, you, if, so you're area director? Area director 27, okay. yes. All right. And, so we'll start um, for a few minutes. Okay, then. The first time I was ever involved in at this level. <laughs> to be honest, at the end of the day, whether it's club area, division or district, it's it's the organisation of it, the, the things that I would say tonight would apply to all of them. And the first thing is be prepared, be prepared and be prepared. You cannot start early enough. I mean, even where, you know, running our club contests now with areas coming up this month with divisions happening in November, which doesn't mean you can't not start organising next year for your international and your evaluation. When you see people in the, in the venues, I mean, it seems a long way off, but... The organisation of it comes down to your not leaving things to the last minute, which unfortunately I do see happen. And then people are all like over the place. I know it's difficult sometimes, especially when we're in person, we've gone back in person and there is difficulties with roles and how people can um, get judges in and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at any contest is whether you're the, the Peter's going to talk about the chief judge side of it. So I'm I'm here as the contest chair. So as contest chair, my thing is right. I need who is going to be in the contest. Whether I'm at club level, you know, which of my club members are going to be in these contests. And then when you get to area, you need to to really start looking at your clubs in the area and who they have either nominated through, because as we know, clubs, well, you may or may not know that clubs are able to nominate through a contestant to the area, but area, division and district must hold a contest. Even if you've got one contestant in area, you must hold a contest. Clubs are pretty free reign. So when you're an area director, you need to start with your contest chair working hand in hand with your chief judge. Everybody needs to pull together and they cannot work on it too early. As soon as you have your day, you can start getting your clubs to send through their nominations because there's a lot of paperwork that needs to happen. You need to make sure, obviously, three of the contests, there's no requirement for our contestants that basically have to be a member of the club of which they are um, representing. They must be a member of the club. Then, at, then at, what was I saying? They have to be a member of the club. At area level, you need to, again, be a member of the club. That's for your humorous evaluation and table topics. But the international speech contest, all contestants from club level and above must be at a level two pathway. They must have submitted level one and level two and be a paid member of that club at the time of the competition. And that level one and two must be submitted through 
to to um, the DCP. It must be submitted in, in, in Club Central. So for the international speech contest only, a DTM or level two pathway, level one and level two completed, okay? Um, and there must be a member of the club at the time of their nomination through or at the time of the contest. So again, it's getting that paperwork. They need to be signing the eligibility forms. You need to get their speech titles in. You need to clarify their names. A lot of the paperwork now you can send out online. It saves an awful lot of time when you get to the venue. If people have already signed off and said they're confirmed and you have their speech titles and their eligibility for profile forms so you can have a little bit of a talk with them during the break. Of course, at division level, it's the areas that need to be sending in their nominees. So in general, after a club contest, the club president or the chief judge would be sending their nominees through, the winners or their nominees through to the area director. At area level, the area director must be absolutely certain that the chief judge has sent the winners list through to the division director and at division level the winner the, the again it's the chief judge and the contest chairs and sorry the chief judge and the uh, district director needs to ensure that that winner's form goes through to Danny or uh, PQD this year okay and, and it's not just the first second and third place it is every single person who took part in the contest if you've got six people at the contest the judge will have listed all six in the order and that list must go through to the next level, okay? If you've got one contestant being nominated at club level, okay? If you've got six areas, then you've got six contestants that should be on that form. If somebody's been disqualified, then you can put along it disqualified but the, just to make sure that they do not get called upon should uh, one, two, three, and four and five not be able to, to attend that level. So the organization of it is, is absolutely paramount. You can be looking at your, as, as a contest chair, you're basically looking after the contestants and making sure they're coming through. But sometimes if you are area or division director, you're chasing people to get results. And of course, as it comes up to the division district level, then it can be quite tricky trying to get remembering who your chief judge was six months ago. So as soon as the contests are finished in November, you must send that form of the winners through to Danny and then early next year when we start the next lot. So paperwork, read the rule book. There's been only one change in the rule book from last year, and that was basically a wording change. But I cannot emphasise enough you know, many, many questions we get are actually answered in the rule book. Sometimes you need the clarity of it because it can be a little bit like, well, what does it actually mean? And that's fine. But many of the questions are answered in the rule book. And there's also on the international site, there is a, if you put contests in, you'll get a list and many people have submitted questions through TMI and you can have a look at the answers there as well. But we're here to help you. Don't think you can't email uh, us at our D71 contest and judging email address, which I'm not sure if that was circulated, Danny. I, I should have put it in the chat box, but I'll put it in later. So the contest judging team and chair have got a dedicated email. And if you have any questions or queries, please, please, please send it through. And we are monitoring that email over, certainly from now as the contests are ramping up. So I'll leave it there just to say again, please organise get your paperwork sorted, make sure you've got all your contestants, make sure they are eligible, that they are a member of a club, that they are a member of, of a club in good standing, and make sure that the rules are understood by the contest chair for the disqualification um, angles of any contestants. The timing was the big one. To remember, there's an extra second. It's now 7 minutes and 31 for the International and Humorous Contest, 2 minutes 31 for the topics and three minutes 31 is a disqualification time running over. And of course, 
you you have to min, make, hit a minimum of four minutes and 30 seconds on the international and the humorous, one minute at the topics and two minutes at the evaluation, okay? So please read through the rule book, see the changes on the timing from two years ago now, and I know people still haven't really uh, picked that up. So it'll be good if, if we can start making sure people understand that. I'll put the email for our uh, chair for the email address into the chat in the in a few minutes. And I think we're going to leave questions to the end, perhaps. Is that correct, Danny? Or can I take uh, questions? Yeah, if we if yeah, we'll just go through the first bit and then have the yeah. que question and answer session. At the end. Um, sure. at the end. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave it there for now and hand over back to hand it to Peter or back to you, Danny. To Peter. Uh, wait, Peter. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm on my screen. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Over to Peter to, to look at the basics yeah. of, of the judging. Okay, as Liz says, one of the most important things for a judge is the last thing they do, which is to pass over the full results to the area director um, or division director. Um, at the end of the contest, and that's to make sure that uh, that if somebody does fall out, that they know who's next in the list. And but it has to be absolutely everybody. So as Liz says, if there's six contestants, you are placing one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, so and and so on on both of them. So I'm just going to just deduce. So you have to place all. All contests. The other thing is you have to implement the rules of the contest now. Just like refereeing in a match, and some people say that uh, New Zealand had a forward pass there last weekend. Other people said it wasn't, but it's the inter interpretation of the rules and the judge's rule, judge's decision is final on the night. So try to make sure that you're fairly up to date with all the rules and any potential questions that, that may come in. A lot of might be due to timing and also with um, the eligibility of the speech of whether it's... Um, it, it's um, but I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it's a, um, a genuine. It's a, uh, I've lost my speech. So um, that 25, that 75 percent of it is original material. But in terms of the teams, that's, that's the main thing is you've got the chief judge and you have a tiebreaker judge. In cases where you find you're finding it tight to find judges, particularly now that all the clubs are back to physical in-person meetings, so the judges can't be online, the chief judge can be the tiebreaker judge. Um, if possible, you want a dep deputy chief judge just in case something happens, that if somebody gets caught up in traffic or somebody suddenly is unable to attend, a, a deputy chief judge is there. That's particularly important for an, uh, an area contest or a division contest. Voting judges for clubs, you need five judges. Uh, for area, you need five judges. For division, it's seven, and district, it's seven. Where possible with clubs, again, you're you're trying to you're trying to let the judges know that they're putting forward the best contestant of the club to the area, or the best contestant in the area to division, etc. So you want to try and make sure the judges aren't just doing the voting because they like somebody or they, they know them from hearing them before. So try and push to the judges that they have to try to be as fair as possible in the voting and that to remember that this person's representing the club, not just representing because uh, they're a mate. And that's where you're trying to get judges from other uh, clubs at a club contest or other areas at an area contest to try and keep it as fair and as diverse as possible. In terms of counters, again, you're looking to have two counters at club and area level. Uh, sometimes the counters can double up for something like sergeant at arms or other roles in the club because they're only going to be coming in at the end of the judging uh, and helping on the accounting. Timers as well. So sometimes they say the contest chair organizes the timers, sometimes it's a judge. But again, you're looking to have two timers to make sure that and the timings are, are good. And again, sometimes the timer can double up with another position if they're uh, doing it, uh, doing it in, in the club. Um, so in terms of the judges' ballots, you want to make sure that just the chief judge and if there's a deputy chief judge are the only people that see the, the ballots along with the counters. The tiebreaker judge only converses with the chief judge. So the tiebreaker judge's ballot is not seen by anybody else. And then the timers, it's important that the timers give their ballots to the judges. Um, that's 
about it in terms of the official part that I have. Sorry, I've, I've had a particularly hard day. Um, I'll go a little bit on the judging and the counting process. So you want to count the votes and tabulate the, the results and use and disqualify anyone who has gone under or over the time. And then, as they say, you fill out the notification of the winners for the for the presentation or the announcement. You're doing it in reverse order in third place, second place and first place. And then at the end of it, the idea is to destroy all the confidential paperwork. Um, so that's just a general overview. Again, if there's any questions, well, it'd be a lot easier to answer the questions. Thank you very much for that, Peter. And, and I'm sure there will be questions. There's always seems to be a lot of questions on the judging role. Um, for me, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the venue. Now, I, I appreciate that this probably only applies to area directors and division directors, because usually at a club level, the contest will be in your usual meetings. So it's not a problem. It, it's become an issue this year because this is the first time that we've had face-to-face -face contests since 2019 in, in my division's case. And so a lot of people, I mean, that's four years, um, a lot of people will have joined Toastmasters and become uh, presidents and area directors in that time and so won't have known a face-to-face -face meeting. Those of you who have been in Toastmasters a while will know about venues and about some of the issues surrounding it. And venues have, some venues have become more expensive. Hotels, certainly I know in the UK and from friends I've talked to in Ireland, the, the price of hotels has gone up um, since COVID. So there's that issue. Essentially, you cannot charge a contestant an entrance fee. So if you are charging five euros, 10 euros, whatever, you can't charge contestants that. You can, if you're charging for tea and biscuits or that sort of thing, you can ask them to make a donation to that, but the, you cannot charge contestants to um, enter the, to, to get into the venue. So you've got to make a judgment about how much you're going to need to charge um, to, to break even, because the contest is supposed to break even. Um, what I would suggest is if you're an ADDD, maybe ask your clubs, uh, uh, do any clubs meet somewhere that would um, welcome a contest? Say for example, in my division, Division E, the East Midland speakers meet in a pub restaurant and they, the, the room's usually available on a Saturday. So that, that's a venue we can use. It might be that you might get a discounted rate because you're bringing in extra business to them. You can try that, try, try negotiating. You know, once um, when I was area director, we had an area contest. We went to a, a pub restaurant over in Leicester and the, their meeting room was a boathouse next to the river. They gave us that free because we promised to try and get as many people who've gone to the contest to stay and have a drink, have a meal. And they did, you know, bless them. We, I, I think it was the best Saturday lunchtime they'd had at the pub. So maybe you can negotiate with that. You know, we, we, we all promised that these people, all these people who come in, you know, they might be trainers, they might be public speakers, they might be looking for a venue. If they come to this and see yours, it might be good business for you. You can try all these things to try and reduce the price. It might be church halls. Um, uh, community centres might be a little bit more, uh, you know, less expensive than, than hotels. But, you know, sometimes you can negotiate with hotels because... You can say, well, look, we're going to make sure we get this on the radio and the, and the newspapers. It's going to be good business for you. We'll say, you know, we met at your hotel and they were, you know, I think you have to try what you can to try and reduce the cost. Because, as I say, you can only raise money um, via um, 
contest, uh, non-contestants. You might consider, and I know one area has done this, in making it a bit longer than just the contest and make it an educational session. So you get somebody from your area, your division, who might I don't know, be an expert in evaluations, in table topics, in impromptu speaking, maybe have them as a guest speaker, and you could charge for people to come to that. That, that might attract some people. Um, if some of your clubs have got people who've got awards, you know, they've got a level five, they've got a triple crown, um, they've got DTM, maybe invite them along and present something like that to them because then that will get them along and perhaps some of their friends and club members. So these are all things you can do. And one thing somebody suggested to me, and I've never done this, but you could run a raffle, which might raise some funds to, to help you. Um, you know, if you go around some of the local shops and ask if they'll give a donation, maybe, um, you know, you might strike lucky. And as Peter said, golf clubs sometimes. I, I, I do know that our local golf club here in Hinkley, we've, um, when I was a governor, a school governor, they used to have be very good rates for that. And they've usually got some good meeting rooms and catering. So, you know, what I would do if you're area director and division director is use your presidents, get, ask your presidents because they'll know the area. Um, they'll know, be able to, might be able to suggest something for you. So it's difficult and there's a lot of spade work, but sometimes you can just strike lucky, get a deal and, you know, reduce the costs for people as much. And then hopefully that will attract more and just keep pushing it and pushing it. Um, so there we are. That is a very basic overview of the role of the contest chair, the role of the chief judge, and if you're AD or DD, your role in, in securing a venue. So now it's open to questions. As I said at the beginning, please don't go away tonight with any questions about contests, because you've got Peter here who's chief judge, you've got Liz here who's got a wealth of experience about running clubs, she uh, running contests. She did, uh, well, she's run a few clubs as well, but um, that's another matter. Um, she was a district contest chair last year. So over to you, Angela. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say something. Um, thank you very much for that, for that information. Uh, when I raised the um, idea of the raffle, somebody had mentioned it to me and I raised it at our council meeting. Um, my area directors didn't think that it was something to do because they felt that we're already putting people on that quite well, some kind of pressure um, requesting that they pay 10 euros for the tickets, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw reasons with it because having having to do that raffle meant that you're still going to be telling them to bring things for the raffle, you know, um, gifts. So mm -hmm. I just think, I don't know, I kind of agree with them that it's a bit too much. Mm. Well, I mean, that was just somebody suggested to me that they done for their area. It might, you know, be for everybody, it, you know, you might ask clubs to donate some things. Um, Sorry, Liz, have you got a point about that? Yeah, it's actually something that does happen in clubs where clubs that area and the divisions do raffles to try, you know, to, to make the money. And what they do is they just say you've got four clubs and um, you may say, OK, we've got like four clubs in the area and one club would you, you could say to one club, right, you organise a humorous contest, the other club you organise the evaluation the other club you organise the uh, meal type of thing, the food and drink, and then the other club would organise right mm. raffle, or each club could donate something for a raffle, and somebody would be there to to sell the tickets. It does happen, um, and it can be quite, it can raise a lot of money for mm. for the event for the for the contest at area and district level, mm. at division and district level as well. But yeah, and again, it's I, something sorry. that perhaps not widely done in England. It's not widely yeah. done in our district. So. Thanks, Liz. Um, yeah, and I think you, ought, you need to um, appoint a raffle master 
um, because it's important to spread the jobs out. And possibly, I don't know, Elizabeth, there might be a pathway, uh, there might be a pathways project in it. Um, it's worth using that as a the sales technique. But anyway, so there we go, John. Uh, thanks, Danny. It's, it's just a, a question of, on, of clarification on the judging. Uh, it was outlined that we, re we require five judges oh. at area contest level. Does that include the chief judge or is it five plus the chief judge? I just wish to um, it, it's Well, the chief judge is the chief judge. So the chief right. judge is uh, effectively the organiser of the judging. So you need at least five judges. Five judges. Five okay. judges, yeah. Th thanks, Peter. just want to clarify that. Yeah. Okay, John. Thank you. Anybody? Come on, there's got to be questions. Oh, Liz, Elizabeth, DD, Elizabeth. Um, my question is one that I was asked a lot last year when I was on PQD. You please comment on the two contestant rule because that comes up all the time. Please comment on that. Well, yeah. I can comment on it. Liz, do you want to say anything? No, you go ahead, Danny. It's all right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, it is a question which comes up time and again. Basically, if you have an area with four clubs or fewer, each of those clubs can send two contestants to the area contest for humorous and for table topics. If you've got five or more clubs in your area, each club can only send one contestant to the area contest. At division level, if you have three or fewer divisions, you can send two from each area. Each area can send two contestants to the division. If you've got four or more areas in your division and only send one and that applies for all contests liz liz yeah um club club to area yes yeah does it apply area to division yeah if you've got three or all fewer right. clubs oh okay so, i think because we've not we we have yeah. more Okay, so, so there's, areas, many... there's, a, there's a couple of areas that have got three, only got, yeah. sorry, there are a couple of divisions that have only got three areas. Oh, is, it? is that and just they this, can yeah. send two contestants per area to the division. Right. Otherwise, it's now, one. Can I add to that? Because yes, this please. came up last, last year in Area 28. Area 28 went from five clubs to four clubs. And as far as I know, I think I was reading it last night, in the rules, that's if an area has four. four or less clubs in good standing for eight, for I think it's eight weeks is the time limit, mm. then they can have two. So if mm. an area, say, has five clubs at the beginning of the season and then one club is not in good standing, doesn't uh, conform, uh, a period of eight weeks, whereas I think previously it had to be officially recognized that there were only four clubs in the area. So now that if a club, say for argument's sake, did not continue their membership at the end of September, uh, an eight-week period applies. So if the contest had been held at the end of November, did, that, you could have four. So. so they have to be actually suspended on the TMI site, officially it, suspended? No, no. That, well, that's what I read was that eight weeks in good, uh, not in good standing. Eight, eight weeks from... So that, that's yeah. something that might just have to get verified. Hmm. Yeah, because that happened in yeah. Area 15 one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. two, three clubs went missing, and but we still <laughs> couldn't do anything because we uh, they were still officially on the site, although they had actually dissolved, and it actually uh, had an effect on the, the area and division level. But anyway, it, it, I, think, I think we may have to be actually suspended but I'd clarify that as well, Peter, for my yeah. answer. That, that's an important point as well. For a member to compete in a contest, the, the club they are a member of has to be in good standing. Yeah. So yeah. that means that they've got to have at least eight paid members 
yeah. on the 1st of October or the 1st of April next year. Uh, Dee Dee Elizabeth, does that answer your question? I mean, I know you know the answer. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not so much answer my questions that you're going to be inundated with questions and it's the same question all the time. So my as a I think my suggestion would be to put something on the website just to and just point members to it because as you said, most people do not read the the, the rule book and everyone's busy, so it just helps to to, to clarify on that. I think what it points to though, and I think um Liz mentioned it, you've mentioned it, that someone has to do due diligence. So you particularly when it comes to the international speech, someone's got to double, double check the person's got a level two, not think they have, but definitely know that they, they've got it. You've got to make sure how many clubs are on the area. And I think if if we're in any doubt about whether the club is suspended or whatever, it should be five or four, get on the line to TI. I think but someone's got to be in there to do that due diligence. <laughs> what you don't want is for someone to get all the way up to division level, only to find that there's been some mistake further. On and they can't continue yeah. yeah and also the like you've just said there elizabeth you can ring toastmasters international and they are absolutely brilliant they will answer your question they'll check for you they'll make sure that you understand the the ruling as well so they're absolutely brilliant they've got a contest guru sitting up there that yeah. will answer yeah. questions and you can just you ring them and chat to them and Use the Toastmasters International phone. There's a couple of, I saw Tom, he, you've had your hand up for a little while, Tom. Yeah, I just put the word again. I just put the word again to the chat there from the from the rules. So that's, it's just, it's a little bit in, 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 uh, unambiguous. So it may just need confirmation. Liz and Danny, my, my question is, I just want to be sure in my head that I know what I'm talking about regarding the judges. I mean, area competition. Go ahead with a uh, chief judge, a uh, tiebreaker judge, uh, your dual purpose, and four other judges rather than uh, five judges. Peter, the, yes. the preference will be to have the five judges and for the chief mm. judge to act as the tiebreaker judge. Mm. Um, no, no. no. No, oh. sorry, Peter. I'm, okay, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry to jump in there, but no. Okay, so, okay. The, the, the chief judge and the tiebreaker judge are two separate people. Okay. okay. You cannot oh. and should not double up those two roles ever. Oh. No judge, all the judges, okay. you should have a mm. chief judge, a tiebreaker judge, yeah. and then the required amount of judges wherever possible. Mm. But, yep. uh, no, the chief judge, the, the chief judge is there to oversee and not judge. They're not a okay. judge. Mm. Okay, apologies yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah, they're not a judge. The chief judge is not a judge. I yeah. think if, if 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 you're absolutely stuck, it's better to have four judges and one tiebreak judge. Um, but obviously, try to get five judges and a tiebreak. So it, if you want to look at the judging team, you're actually talking six judges minimum, including the yes. tiebreak judge, and then the chief judge oversees the whole thing. Um, the, I'm pleased that you clarify that, Liz and, and Peter, because I've been to contests where people have said, oh, I'm the, I'm the chief judge, I'll be the tiebreak judge as well. Mm. Um, no. 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 And, it's, it, and when you think about it, the chief judge is there to watch and be... Yeah. vigilant of the they contest judge. if they're yeah. trying to think about judging it's yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. anyway um it's not i mean i know at club level it can get really tricky for people and um we double up and do things but not those two roles and that, no mm -hmm. you might double up as a counter and a timer or a sergeant at arms and timer or something like that but not not those two roles no liz may i may i just add uh, um one quick question. I apologize about this. Can an area director act as sergeant in that, sergeant at arms um, if called upon? Yes. And okay. all the area division district to get the DLT in. Bring the guys in. They can all do they can be contest chair, chief judge, tiebreaker. They can hold roles. The only the, the rule is that if the people know towards the end of the year that they're going to stand for election, then they cannot be 
in a judging role or a, um, a role in a, in a uh, contest. A, what's the word I'm thinking of? A role holder anyway. Yeah. It, but right yeah. now, in the, the incumbent, the people mm -hmm. who are in place now can um, do those, those roles. As long as they they're not in, you know, they don't know the people in the clubs as you get higher up. So when you get to your club level, basically, as long as you're within the rules, anything goes. But when you get to area, ideally you should be getting at least one judge from each of your clubs to make that balance. So if you've yeah. got four four clubs, you get four judges plus your tie break plus your chief judge. That'd be six. And then when you get to division, you want at least two from each of your areas. Yeah. to you yeah, have four clubs you'll have eight, eight, eight judges the idea is to keep that balance but yes the ad mm -hmm. can pick a hold a role and um dds can hold a role and the district leadership team as well thank you very much liz and danny thank you and peter oh uh, mark, mark i did see your hand up sorry can and then can we just come to catherine uh, um, was it a question about judging mark Okay. We can't, we need you, we can't hit, oh, good. Yes. Yeah. Can I just ask, is there a separate class of judge in addition to voting judges, chief judge and tie-breaking judge? It's called script judges. Because I saw a reference to script judges somewhere. Or was script I just mistaken? No, I've not seen that. What, what was that in relation to, Mark? It was in relation to a contest. Ah, never heard of it. No, okay, if it, thanks. In the rule book, if it ain't in the rule book, no. No, I couldn't see it in the, in, I, I read through the competition rules and I couldn't yeah. find it. Yeah. I just wanted I to make know. sure I wasn't missing something. Thanks. Is some, have you seen yeah. the script judge in action? No, no, no. It's I just saw a reference to, to script <laughs> judges as well as voting judges. And I thought, I don't know what that is. So no, it was obviously no. a mistake somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Um, no problem, Mark. Um, Catherine, over to you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, uh, Danny. Good evening, well, everybody. You know, uh, just a couple of know. points. Um, I thought the first thing was the raffle. I understood that we couldn't go around to shops because Toastmasters was a non-profit organisation. So I didn't realise we could do things well, like that. Yeah, that's just my first point. And the second point, I was a judge last night for Mid-Ulster and there's so much paperwork that I printed off and everything oh, yeah. and there was nothing used. I mean, all we done was one, two, three into the chat of who we yeah. thought was the winner. So it frustrates me with all this paperwork that I get and to fill out and it's it's not even used then. But anyway, my third point then was, um, can we check at this stage if somebody has, if they've won in their their um, club and they're going on to the area, can we check at this stage to see that they have level two done? But that's only for the international speech contest, which will be next year. So oh, right so now... Don't need to have yeah, done, so for, done for the humorous the humorous and the table topics Woman. and the evaluation there's no requirement at all ah, for education right. it is what only for the international so what i would be doing oh. perhaps as your president or your vpa is asking members who would like to be in the international speech contest next year and see mm -hmm. if they haven't got that level two that they work towards that if possible, that's that's the aim that you would be doing right now. But yeah. all the other speech contests, there's no educational requirement. It's only the international speech contest that has that. Yeah. Um. Thanks uh, for that, Catherine. I am going to be sending an email out at the beginning of November to everyone just to to remind them of that rule because mm -hmm. we don't want people who, who really want to be in the international speech contest in February, March. And then they suddenly realise the night mm. before or whatever that they're not level two. It's mm. too late. So they need to make sure they're level two or they can get some speeches in to make sure they are at that level. And, and the, not just doing the speeches, the speeches. And getting them recorded, yes, exactly. Yeah. They must be submitted on the table. must be on the system. Yeah. Because yeah. when you ring up in the goal, 
no, they're not they're not there or they haven't you can see they haven't opened the pathways even they haven't looked at this they can see um all the information that we would need to clarify the status of anybody going into the international speech contest mm -hmm. okay so it's really really important can I add to Catherine? You definitely can go around to supermarkets and so on. I've had, I've got tokens from Tesco's, Waitrose, all sorts. I mean, obviously, keep it small, keep it simple. We're not looking to make a profit. Simply as a raffle, particularly at Christmas time, and they have been all been very generous. So we've been done that. So that that is allowed. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think the ruling, Catherine, is that you can't do it on a regular basis. So you couldn't do it every week in a club to raise funds. If it's a one-off thing through <laughs> specific, I think I'm right in saying. Well, there's some clubs in the US who have who have well, raised every, like week. every every week every, it's, every week. It's, how, it's how they do business. They have raffles every week to the, raise a little bit of money. The thing so is, is the you don't tell Ti. Yes. You know. I think. I th doesn't it say that you you cannot raise money for a particular person? So, for example, no, Danny, you in the international speech contest, we can't run a raffle in the club to fund you to go off to no. that contest. What we can do, though, is have a raffle every week and have a couple of dollars to, or euros or pounds to put into the club coffers. In a lot of clubs, what they do is somebody's nominated each week to bring a little raffle prize and you sell a ticket for 50p. Or a, or a pound for three or something like that. Something little, and it soon mounts up over the year. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a really, really great prize, you'll be amazed at how many tickets people want to buy to grab it. So, That's great, because there could actually be promotion for people to come to the meetings if they yeah. knew there's a raffle mm -hmm. and there's prizes. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. some people just done it, you know. Just give me an idea. That. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm sorry I mentioned the raffle to now. It seems to have taken <laughs> off. But uh, it, it, it's a long way of attracting people, possibly. <laughs> yeah. and, and also for your contests, it can help you break even there because you're yeah. not you're not raising it for a person. You're raising it so that you can cover the cost of a, yeah. an event for everybody. So, mm. Mm. All right, thanks for that, yeah. Catherine. Thank Jamie. You. Hi, Danny. Um, thanks very much. My question is um, regarding the forms to get people to register, you know, to say what their speech is and their name and their club number. What's the procedure for that at, at area level? So most of the time, Jamie, at area level, the contest chair would have all that paperwork in the good old days all the paperwork would be printed off and taken you would have them um, the speech the profile you would have the eligibility form for the contestants and um, you may need a photo um, consent for photographs if you're going to publicize and stuff like that what i find now is obviously there's still paperwork and that needs to be complete on the night but you can send stuff like if i'm contest chair very often I would send everything electronically to the contestants and ask them to complete and send it back. So I can then see all electronically uh, the speech titles, their profiles and their eligibility. So you've got that little reduction in, in uh, having where, to use where, print. Where do, where, where do we find it is, is my question. Oh, where do you find it? TMI. Where, International do, where is Standard. it listed and where do I find it? So we have okay, to... Okay, so if you, if you go onto the international... Toastmaster site, Toastmasters International site, and it, right. you can actually put in the little search at the top right hand corner contests, um, and all the information comes up. You can put in profile, contest profile form. Uh, they've got packs. You, can, you actually get a pack, a humorous contest pack, the, okay. and you've got the certificates as well. Um, participation certificates and the winners one two three certificates there as well They're all it's all up on the site yeah. lovely thank you uh, you also in. say jamie um we've put a load of your area director aren't you so you yes. should be able to access the the information and i do believe we've put the pack there i think bob put that there on our district website. So the email we sent out, I sent out with a link. If you go on that, I'm fairly certain Bob put all the paperwork on that. Right. But the link, the link for this meeting, Danny. 
No, no, there was an email okay. I sent out to all area directors and division directors on Monday. And there was okay. a link, Steve uh, Campion has put a, a load of resources for ADs and DDs um, on our district website. If you go, if you go back, find that email and click on, on the link, you'll see that there's a load of resources there for, um, for contests. Um, Lovely, thank you. And I'll no, double also... check, sorry. Mm -mm. Sorry, so that, that's where it is, or Toastmasters International. I think yes. if you go to the shop as well in Toastmasters, but it's free, you can order Damn. them through the shop yeah. or something. I was just going to say, just to remind clubs and areas and divisions that you must, must, must announce 321. If the club only has three contestants, you still go 321. Okay, you must, it, it, that ruling came out about three or four years ago where you have to save the third place person. And I've seen some clubs where they've only had three contestants that just go two, one. But in, in actual fact, you're, you're supposed to do the whole lot. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Jamie, Elizabeth put the link in chat. Um, Elizabeth. She's far more technical than I am. Um, <laughs> uh, Anne, did you have your hand up? Oh, she's gone. Um, I think she's gone off. She's dropped, dropped. She's gone out. Just lost contact. Okay. Oh no, she's there. You've just got your camera off, Anne. No. Did I frighten you? I'm sorry. <laughs> she's put her camera off and gone away. I've got a very frightening face. But <laughs> while we're waiting for Anne to come back, Katuta. Hi. 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 Thank you. Oh. Does the rule um, to for judges to be a minimum of level one apply to the table topics and numerous contests as well? Level one? Level, level that... two. No, no, no. There's judges um, at club level. There is... Where's Peter? Sorry, Peter, I'm jumping in. Sorry, yeah, at, at, uh, at club level, no, there's no, there's no restriction. But, at at um, area level? Area level. Six CCs, um, kind of competent communicator. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, um, um, I don't even think it says level one for judges, does it? It's level two or six CCs yeah. in level the Six two. CCs, yeah. Um, At area division and above. What I know is that some some areas have been having difficulty getting judges because you're supposed yeah. to have this at the minimum. Maybe, I don't know if it's possible geographically, it might not be. You could ask your neighbor neighbor area if they can supply some judges and you will do the same for them mm -hmm. um that, that might be possible uh you know you, you you can i don't know if you're level two katuta but um you are i am i am yeah, so you could be a judge as long as it doesn't as long as it balances out in the area so we were talking earlier about how you know if you can't get five four or we'll do as long as each club's represented. Okay. So there's one from each club and not sort of like one from three clubs and then two from another because that, although we believe people to have integrity and that's one of our core values, you know, people can, you know, people might cause a, a fuss if, if that was the okay. case. But yeah, it's level two. Okay. Um, and that's for all contests. Okay. Uh, at Except area club. and division. <laughs> Except for clubs, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anne. Thank you. Um, okay. no, all I was just going to say that time, um, Danny, was I've learned at this stage and I've pretty well memorized the forum numbers. So, for example, form 1183 is for the speaker certification of eligibility and originality and form 1189 is the speech contestant profile <laughs> well done Anne. well done <laughs> so i've actually got all these forms and all the numbers <laughs> 
written down in a special folder. No, these days well, the um, forms are um you can write into them online. So that's yeah. why I, I was I was contest chair a little while back for for a club, and I just sent everything electronically. And then on the night, there was only two people that hadn't been able to do it, and that were it. It was dead easy. So I, we'll have some perks of being in Zoom for the last four years, but coming back into in person meetings is. Is reality of where how yeah. tricky it can be, for sure. Yeah. That's brilliant, and I can't even remember my door number sometimes. Let alone <laughs> <laughs> forms for both for, for judging. <laughs> well done. I'm sorry. Are there any more questions? Please, as I say, don't go away tonight having any sort of niggling doubts, because sometimes these things, you know, are a little bit. Um, Difficult to understand sometimes. Uh, Elizabeth, DD Elizabeth. I think one question that has come up from members is about club contests. If they have a club contest and none of the contestants can make it to the area level, can they then go off and nominate someone? No. And the answer is no, they cannot no. do that. <laughs> But that that has the question has been asked, and so I think we need to clarify. If you go through a contest, then if you have one to seven people, and you can't get anyone to go. Unfortunately, you've missed the opportunity. You cannot then go and nominate someone um, to go to the contest. So I think that that's where that's come up a few times. I mean, and in terms of judging, I know sometimes it's difficult to be aware of all the, the rules, and sometimes it's a little bit you question it. I think the principle I use is is what's the fairest approach because I think the rule book has got to apply to all the the districts in the world, so they've got to try and and make it as simple but as cover all as possible. So when somebody said, "Well, we're supposed to have five judges per area, what if we can only get four? Well, if that's the case, then what's the fairest way of doing that is to make sure that each club's represented. Um, you know, and if you look at it on that basis, what what we've just said is that if a club chooses a method to to um, decide on their contestant, then then they use that. And, and if they if as Liz has just said, if none of them can attend, then it's sad. But you know, um, it's not fair on the other clubs who have done the contest. So no. anyway. Can I add in also that just to remind people that can only go to one area contest as well. Mm. Doesn't matter where you are, um, you represent one club and go to that area. So if you're in three different clubs in three different areas, you have to decide which one you want to represent. If you you can you can do all your club contests, and if you win them all, you need to make a decision on which area you go to. You cannot represent three areas. All right. So that's another one that uh, pops up every now and again. In the same contest. In the same contest, yeah. So if you went in the humorous and the topics and you won the humorous in one and the topics in another, then yeah. yes, you can go to the different area, but you cannot mm. do it. If, you, if you've no. gone in the humorous contest in three clubs in three different areas and you win, you have to decide which club you're going mm. to represent in which area. You can't go to all three areas. Because if you were in a division that only had three areas and you won each area contest, there'd only be you as a contestant. <laughs> um, so that's where the fairness comes in, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Um, uh, anybody else? So everybody is ready, is primed for anything that's going to come up, uh, they're going to come against. Do you want to uh, just... Sorry, after you. Um, there's one thing that's come up that uh, particularly my club in Kildare now there's an awful lot of new members who have very little experience of mm. contests and we had that before actually the year I joined back in 2017 and I remember the club had a Tall Tales competition night or a Tall Tales night mm. for the club um, had nothing to do with going further on but what it did it gave very good experience to club members of how to run a competition and allow any mistakes to get corrected um, so that's something that I think I'm going to be suggesting it to our current president to do for Christmas but it would mm. give people 
some experience of running a club contest well before the mm. international speech content contest uh, comes because I know that you know we only started back at the end of August people are still on holidays and everything some people uh, literally have only been at two meetings and then you're immediately into contest night and this the president just said look simply we do not have the ability to run the contest for the current thing so we're just so the, the club is nominating um, so I've, I'm suggesting that we run a tall tales night to give people the experience of of running a contest and judging and counters and the various aspects of it. So. Thank you for that, Peter. Well, it's a one minute to eight. So I'd like to thank you all for coming along. I hope you benefited from the call from, from tonight. Liz has put the um, email address. If you have got any questions or if somebody comes to you with a question that's not been covered tonight, you can email them and they'll they'll respond to you with that. Um, good luck with all the contests. I'm looking forward to some of the division contests I'm going to and, and area. And I look forward to seeing you all in Port Leash in May next year for the conference. And next week's session, for those of you um, who are interested in it, We've got a, a special visitor who's going to look at how we can use AI, artificial intelligence, to help us become more effective club officers in our club role. So please go to the web, go to our website and the events and, and register for that. Kajitan Barreto, he is, you've probably heard of him. He is he's, uh, done so much in respect mm. to IT, uh, and branding and all the rest of it and he's a real expert on this mm -hmm. so if you want to know how to use AI please tell everybody else um, to come along and also we've got on Saturday morning our first pathways onboarding session so if you've got any new members uh, who are interested who, who want to to learn how to onboard onto pathways or if you've got any members who've got problems with pathways please register again on the calendar. Um, we're trying that on Saturday morning. Elizabeth, DD. Oh, Elizabeth. yes. I, I, I have to say on the 24th of October, Larry Lyons will be running a, a, his session on parliamentary procedures. Really interesting course. I would invite everyone to consider coming along to that because parliamentary procedures can help you run more effective meetings in your club, more effective meetings at area, your area councils, your division councils, and for me and for the DLT, run the um, district council meeting at the conference. So please, please, please come along. Larry is a brilliant instructor. He he even makes it fun. Can you imagine parliamentary procedures being fun? So please, please, please go and register, and we'll see you all. Um, Tom and I have been have done the course already. But we're going back. So um, in the Tom teaching myself, we've all done the course. So we're going back for a second dose. We, we loved it that much. So we're hoping to enthuse you as well to come along and do parliamentary procedure. I can't wait. And the little book, as I said, Robert Rules of, of um, Order. Yeah, is what we're going to use. So, and the homework is to read chapters one and two before next Wednesday session, because we will, we will be quizzed. But it's fun. It's fun. So who is coming well, next week? <clears throat> Who's coming uh, next week? Uh, Madam, Madam DD. Yeah. You, you you missed it. It's actually for the third dose. Oh, don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I've been we've, three we've times. I'm going back. Done. Put it three times. Three so who's coming? Who's coming? One, Tom, is Tom myself, yes. you. Oh, yes, Anthony. yeah. Who, who else is going Matty. to join us? Oh, brilliant. Mark, thank you. Uh, Matty, oh, brilliant, brilliant. Matty's coming. Oh, and, and, and Danny oh. and, and Angela. Great stuff. I'll tell I'll go and tell Larry now, full house. Yes. It's a great experience. <laughs> it is, it is. Impressive. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. And there's a Can't graduation, imagine. and it's a graduation at the end with, 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 with um a guest of honor. So it's really good. And Jamie's coming as well. This is brilliant. Brilliant. God bless. I, I have Thank one you. more question. Sorry, nobody's oh. asked. Oh. One more quick question. Regarding the table topics competition. Uh, is it up to the area to come up with a table topic to discuss, or is there a list of them? Is it the contest, contest chair? chair. Contest the contest chair, chair chooses it and keeps it very right. secret. 
and has to go to Fort Knox and get locked up. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. We've gone over time. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the evening. Yeah. Stay dry. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant and session. Thanks, we'll Liz. Thanks, thanks, Liz. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Peter. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, yeah, Liz brilliant session. Peter. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. See, see you soon. Bye, bye now. Thanks, Melinda. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Bye.